Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and I'm in my office at Georgia Tech, and I'm checking out the synthesizer in the tangible waves format. And the reason I have this is that I'm teaching my ECE 4450 analog circuits for music synthesis class. And I've decided that this semester, the student projects will be in the tangible waves format. And the funds to purchase this setup were thanks to you, the people who made a special purpose donation to the Georgia Tech Foundation to support my work. And depending on what the students come up with for their project and their preferences, will provide some of the designs they create to the public. Whether they want to do that or not will be up to them. Georgia Tech policy is that whatever students create as students at the university is something that they own the IP of. So it'll be up to them what they want to release into the wild or not. But anyway, this is a lot of fun. The reason I thought this would be a great format for student projects is it's pretty easy. The connections are made using these Arduino style headers and there's a consistent format. So you have the inputs on the left and the outputs on the right. The bus for the power that you see down here, that's just zero volts and five volts. So if you have a zero volt, five volt supply, you can quickly hook up something to test things with, even if you don't have the fancy power supply over here hooked up. There's an internal bus that runs along here that has some other information. So if we go over here and take a look at the master unit here, there's a MIDI cable. So this is the breakout for your MIDI cable that comes in and the information from the MIDI, the gate and the CV that shows up here. But instead of having to actually manually patch that, it is included on this bus here, so it goes to all of the various modules. So you can usually get that kind of information here. So for instance, here on in the oscillator, I have the bus CV mapped to CV1. So I'm able to play pitches there. And let's see, what else do I have going on? Ah, here's the ADSR envelope. So I have the gate from the bus patch to the gate input of the envelope generator. The output of that is going to the CV input of this VCA. And then I have the output of the oscillator patch to the VCA. The output of the VCA is going to this molt that's part of the meter unit. And so one of the outputs there is going to the oscilloscope there. That's kind of neat. The oscilloscope has a bunch of different modes so I can Let's see, I can put this into spectrum mode. Let's look at the spectrum. Ah. So that's pretty cool. And then of course, one of the outputs from the mult here is actually going over here to this audio IO pin, which apparently you can use going either direction. And this is what I actually have going to my cheap speakers that I picked up at Office Depot for the office here. Yes, yes, I have fancy studio monitors. I have some Genelex at home. Now, I'm probably going to have the students make modules that are two or three units wide, even if they're not very complicated, just so we have space for parts. I generally have students use through hole parts because I find them personally to be easier to deal with. And we have stacks and stacks of through hole parts in all of the various laboratories around here. Now all of the modules you see here, these use surface mount to keep things small and probably to keep manufacturing costs down. Another thing you notice about the overall aesthetic of the format is this is just stamped on here. This is designed to keep costs down and you're also saving costs on 3.5 millimeter or quarter inch jacks or whatever. Now, obviously this isn't really something you would probably wanna take on stage with you with Trent Reznor. This isn't the most robust setup, but for just kind of messing around with synthesis, it's compact and a lot of fun and relatively inexpensive. So I'm excited about this format. 
One thing I will need to do is to give my students some advice on how to design synth circuits with unipolar supplies. That's something I talk about in my guitar amplification and effects class a little bit, but most synth circuits use a bipolar supply, so I'll need to spend some time talking about how to make unipolar supply circuits. They also have this breadboard module, which is kind of fun. It basically takes the various internal bus signals here and maps them to these IO pins. And let's see, I have two cases here. What I'll probably do once the class gets working on their projects is I'll take some of these modules and split them up between the different cases so that each case has an oscillator and each case has some sort of modulation source like the ADSR or the LFO. You'll notice I didn't actually purchase any voltage controlled filters because a lot of my students are probably going to build voltage controlled filters. I went ahead and got a VCA because otherwise you just have a sound sounding all the time and that's a little bit annoying. So filters are often popular, but students can also build oscillators or wave shapers of various sorts. The main requirement for the project is it has to create or process audio in some way and it has to be voltage controllable in some way, and it has to be fundamentally analog. For this particular class, we're not doing digital signal processing.